All right, so I've got a, a couple of linear functions here. And uh, before I graph them, I'm going to use Desmos in order to graph them this time. Uh, but before I graph them, I just want to go ahead and identify uh, what the slope and the y-intercepts are. So both of these are in y equals mx plus b form. All right, you've got y equals and then some number with an x and then plus some, some number. Okay, so when they're in that form, you can just look at the equation to figure out what the slope and the y-intercept are. So in this one, that slope is just the number that's attached to x. All right, and that is negative 1. Now, usually you want to think of the slope in terms of a fraction, uh, which would be something like negative 1 over 1. All right, that's going to be, that's going to describe uh, the rise over run for the line whenever we graph this thing. It's like it's going to move in that kind of pattern, uh, you know, one up and down and then one left and right is how it's going to move. And then my y-intercept is just positive 3. That's what we should see when we go to graph this thing. All right, for this one, uh, my slope is just negative 5 over 2, and my y-intercept is 0. Okay. It's like a plus 0 right there. Uh, let's go ahead and go over to Desmos so you can see what the graphs of these two look like. Desmos is just a, an online calculator that's really nice. All right, uh, so desmos.com slash calculator. And then over here on the left-hand side, we can type in our function, which was y equals negative x plus 3. Cool. Uh, what's nice about this is you can kind of, you can change some numbers around just to see how the graph is affected. Like if I change the 3 to a 4, you see that the y-intercept just changed to a 4. Or if I change it to a 5, oh, I guess a 6, <laughs> uh, you see that the y-intercept moved way up there. And you could also play around with the slope, you know, whatever number is attached to the x there. All right, let me uh, reset this thing. Negative x plus 3. Uh, I can get my table of values. If I want to click on this little gearbox. Okay. Uh, what this does is it makes all these nice little ordered pairs for me. All right, so it says... Uh, it says 2, 1, so 2 for x, and then this right here is my y. 2, 1 is a solution, and so 2, comma 1 is right here on that line. Right. So we see my y-intercept is 3. Uh, the slope was negative 1, and that was going to describe how the points go with each other. All right, They're going up and down 1, and then left and right 1 from each other. Down 1 and then right one, down one, right one, and it keeps doing that over and over. Um, one thing I guess I should mention is that this one has a negative slope. Right? The other lines that we've graphed so far have always had a positive slope. Right? Uh, let me find those two. Yeah, the two that we graphed earlier, uh, these have a positive slope, and all that means is that from left to right, uh, the function is going to be increasing, right? As the x values get bigger, as you go to the right, uh, the function actually gets higher and higher. Right? That's what happened with those two. Uh, but this function, as the x values get bigger, so as you go to the right, uh, you see that the function kind of declines, right? The y values start getting smaller and smaller. Uh, let's go ahead and graph that other one as well. <clears throat> Clear that. Uh, y equals negative 5 over 2. So you can just do negative 5 divided by 2. And then arrow over with an x. All right. I'll zoom out a little bit on this one. Will it let me zoom out? Maybe not. I'll just go back in. <laughs> so they count by ones instead. <clears throat> All right, so on this one, you see that it passes through the origin, and that's because the y-intercept is zero. Like if you plug in zero for x, you get zero back for y. 
Uh, if we can get some other values on here. Ooh, they're going by 2.5s instead. <clears throat> A little bit harder to see here. So the slope is negative 5 over 2, which is, which is negative 2.5, negative 2.5. So that means that for every 2.5 you go down, you have to go over one unit. All right. And then again, from this point to that point, they do the same thing. They go down two and a half and then over one unit. And it's usually hard to count by halves. Uh, so typically what we do is we compare like like this right here. It's not crossing at a, you know, an integer value. Usually what you're looking for are integer values. Like here it's at zero, zero. And down here it's at to negative five. Usually you want to look for uh, nice whole numbers to figure out the slope. So what you can do is compare from that point to your origin here. And if you count there, it's down five and then over two, right? Which corresponds to what our slope was. It was up and down five. That was the top number. And then it ran two so over two. Uh, I believe that's about it for uh, this one. Yep, I think that's about it. Cool. All right, uh, whenever there's not a number that's out there, we say the y-intercept is zero. And what else did we say? Yeah, whenever there's not an actual number attached to the x, we just assume it's a one. So in this case, we assumed it was negative one. Okay.